Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another interface review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the PreSonus Audio Box. If you are interested in this interface, it'll set you back around 100 bucks on Amazon. As per usual, link in the description. And for this video, I'm using the Rode NT1 connected directly to the audio box with 48 volts phantom power turned on and the gain set at around 50%. I will do no post processing to the audio, but I may boost it in post. So make sure to check the doobly-doo for more information. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Obviously, you're going to get the interface. You get a USB cable. You get some documentation. You get some software that you have to register your product online to download. And damn you, you get a sticker. As far as the build quality, this thing feels pretty excellent. It has an all metal chassis, some nice weight to it. The XLR ports are not loose in the slightest. On the other hand, the dials do wiggle a little bit, but they do have a nice amount of clickiness when you're turning them. On the front of the interface, the first thing you'll find are two XLR or 6.3 millimeter combo jacks. You'll find a 48 volt phantom power switch. You'll find the volume control for channel one and two, and directly next to those dials are lights, which will indicate when you are clipping. Then you'll find a mixer dial, which will allow you to mix between the latency free monitoring as well as the computer playback. You'll find the headphone volume control. You'll find the main output volume control and you'll find a light to indicate that the interface is getting power. On the back of the interface, you'll find the USB plug to connect it to your computer. You'll find some MIDI I.O. You'll find a set of 6.3 millimeter main outputs. And lastly, you'll find a stereo 6.3 millimeter headphone output. As far as specs, this thing has a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, a phantom power supply of plus 48 volts, some mic preamp gain of plus zero to plus 35 decibels, and an instrument instrument preamp gain of negative 30 dB to plus 50 dB. My gain is still set at 50%. I'm gonna drop this down to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise is generated by this interface's preamps. Twenty-five percent. Fifty percent. 75% and 100%. Now I have the Shure SM7B connected directly to the audio box with the gain set at 90% and I just wanted to include this to show you how this thing performs with a notoriously quiet microphone like the SM7B. So here is the latency that I'm having. You can see I have my IO buffer size pretty low at 64 samples and the round trip is 9.7 milliseconds. If I were to increase this to 128, which is what I would typically use, then this is gonna be 12.6 milliseconds. It's not necessarily negligible, but it won't be the most noticeable thing. But if you're trying to do multi-tracks, then this definitely will impact your recording. So here's just a quick sample of the raw guitar with the gain on the interface set at 0%, followed by a sample of the guitar run through bias amp. So here's a quick overview of the settings I'm using to record both channels simultaneously. I have both channels, as you can see right here, set to mono. I have input one set for the microphone or my vocals, and input two over here is set for channel two, and it is my guitar, and the only thing I have on there is bias amp to give me a just an amp sound. What should I sing about today? I don't know, I've never been very good at making lyrics up. So overall, I think this is actually a pretty good option for a hundred bucks. On the plus side, the preamps were pretty quiet all the way up to around 90%. The build quality of this thing is excellent. You're getting two microphone preamps, which you can record to two separate channels, and you get a bunch of plugins as well as a fully featured DAW. 
But on the downside, when I was recording a passive instrument with the gain at 0%, I was almost clipping. So you may run into clipping issues running a DI guitar or bass. And also, I think the latency could prove to be an issue if you're recording a bunch of tracks or if you have a bunch of processing on the tracks while you're recording them. But with all that being said, if you have the need for two XLR inputs with phantom power that you can record to separate tracks and you don't want to spend over a hundred bucks, I think this is a pretty rad option. All right, guys, well, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found the video interesting, fun, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, thumbs down. If you want a microphone or piece of audio gear reviewed sooner, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage and vote for the stuff you want reviewed so it gets to the top of the list. And also, don't forget to follow me on all the social media stuff linked at the bottom of the screen. If you want more videos just like this, subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me. And that'll do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on Friday.